But I do want to I do want to mention though for for you and for for seven because I know you you are both in North Carolina and anybody else out there who might be in North Carolina to do me a personal favor and write your state representative in support of HB two six seven. It is the helmet law. What is it? It is to repeal the the helmet law. I am not writing a letter for that. Killing me. I will not. No, well, I'm not with killing the, you. All, with all I'm the problems saving you. You've got, you want to get a smashed head too. The only thing you'll get from that is you'll get coloring books for Christmas and a minor accident. That's the only thing you're going to get <laughs> by taking away your your dang helmet. You, no, you realize that, that, that he didn't wear his helmet. You realize a half helmet does absolutely nothing. Why don't yeah. you wear a bigger helmet? Because I don't like helmets. I can't hear. I can't see. I don't know. I wear a full face helmet, and I can see better with that than I can through the windshield of my pickup truck. My helmet saved my life when I got hit by that car. But I, I got to say this, and I catch a lot of crap for this. When Michigan passed uh, their their law here uh, saying that helmets, helmets are optional on the condition that you buy extra insurance. Uh, I'm in support of that. If you want to die, go right ahead. That's one less asshole. But uh, I'm going to wear my helmet and with two two of the three certifications that you can get for a helmet. I, I've I've got and uh, it definitely when when I got hit by that car, I, I wouldn't be here today if it, it weren't for that. So I got the exact same brand helmet. Uh, you know when when I had the insurance replace everything. But if somebody else wants to splatter themselves all over the road. You know, I'm going to be a little bit ticked off that they, they held up my, my drive because we got to wait for the crime scene investigation or whatever. But after that, it's like, hey, whatever. It's your life. Do what you want. And I, I catch a lot of crap from people because they see me get off my bike and I take off my helmet. I wear a riding suit, all that crap, steel-toed boots, the whole nine yards. And they go, oh, you wear a helmet. You must be in favor of, of uh, or, or you, you, you probably don't like that they, they pass that law saying it's, it's your choice. I'm like, no, actually, I'm the opposite. And I always get this stunned look. What? You know, just because I do it doesn't mean that, just like seatbelt. You don't want to wear a seatbelt? You want to go through the windshield? Hey, fine. I don't care. You know, I'll pick parts off your vehicle at the junkyard when it ends up there. And, you know, I think it's, it's personal choice. The government's buttoning into our life. But whatever you do, don't keep the helmet companies or the seatbelt companies from having to meet government standards or certain standards when they're developing these safety items. My, my choice is to use that item, but I, I want government regulation on the manufacturers to make sure they actually do what they say they're supposed to do. That's right. It should be my choice. I mean, just uh. think, you know, all these people are trying to get on the show and, you know, if, if you get splattered all over the road, there'll, there'll be an opening for somebody. Mm -hmm. But it's just like the seatbelt. It should be your choice. But when they made it a law, more people wore them. And what do you know? Fatal accidents went down. I know. Accident. But a lot of those, Sarge, a lot of those laws are about revenue. They're not really about public safety. They can tell you that, that you're doing it for public safety, but it's to generate revenue. They guys, don't guys, want you're to ignoring the you fact. Ticket. You're ignoring the fact if it saves just one life. Oh, don't. <laughs> don't. Just and one life. And have if you, you ever seen half, half have you ever seen a trooper go up and work a wreck and ask them if they're work, wearing their seatbelt? When they're like, uh, well, yeah, so you were wearing your seatbelt? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was. Okay. And then they go on. They don't want to unless it's just obvious. That's no, no, because you don't want to add insult to injury. But hey, have I had a seatbelt ticket before? Yes, I have. I learned my lesson. I started wearing it. I was in, I totaled a vehicle one time and three of, no, excuse me, wait a second. There's three. Seven people were involved in three different cars, six that had their seatbelts on were perfectly fine. The one that didn't have his seatbelt on got partially ejected, shattered his neck. He is a quadriplegic. So there you go. Same wreck, three different vehicles, six had seatbelts, six were perfectly fine. One is a quadriplegic. So you, you make your own decision there. 
Well, that's just it, though. You, you do make your own decision. Like I said, I want to make sure that the seatbelt manufacturer, that you know, the Allied Signal or whoever uh, is is over there in Sterling Heights, Michigan, making the seatbelts now. Key safety systems, I think it is, is making seatbelts to the proper standards so they actually work when they're needed. I want to make sure that those two safety ratings that are on my helmet, they actually tested that helmet to both of those ratings. And it, it really, it does what it says it's going to do. But somebody saying, you've got to wear this, nah, that's personal choice. I don't understand why somebody wouldn't want to put a seatbelt on. I've heard the few people that say, I was in a car accident and I got trapped in my car because of the seatbelt. Or uh, they said the only reason I got injured was because oh, I was wearing a seatbelt if I wasn't. And those are few and far between. Barbershop talk. Yeah. And you know what? That, well, no, it may actually be true in a rare situation. Yeah. And, and, and. Uh, obnoxious i don't get the whole i can't see or hear with a helmet i i do just fine man but hey you know, well, it's, the poor it's, conservative, it's, you know it's it's your life it's your the life poor conservative figured it out he told obnoxious one to turn his helmet around the other way mm -hmm. she'll be able to see just fine. oh oh yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and as far as seeing out of your helmet better than your truck windshield you might want to clean the windshield once in a while no, I can see a lot more on my bike even though i set up higher in the truck and everything else i can see a lot i see a lot more people texting in in the uh riding on the bike than i do uh in the pickup truck but uh yeah i i just as long as as long as i know that the those safety devices do what the the manufacturer says they're supposed to do or the government regulates them to do that's what's important to me if, if you choose not to use it and you know it's just like you know one of you guys uh um uh not using your external safety <laughs> Here's a question for you, Squib. You think it's because you're more alert and more aware when you're on your bike than when you're in your truck? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable in my truck because short of a train or a semi-truck, I'm going to crush all these silly little cars that get in my way. But uh, on the bike, yeah, I'm the one that um, – speed is life. It's that old fighter pilot expression, speed is life. I've actually had to get the bike up over 100 miles an hour to keep from getting run over by cars. And then as soon as I get past those morons, I roll it right back down to the speed limit. So I like being able to crack the throttle and gone, I'm out of there. But um, to try to stop at that speed on that bike, uh -uh. I, I'm, you know, I'm going to need all the protection I, I, I can get. And even then, I'm probably not going to make it. But, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm probably uh, more tense uh, on the bike, but it's not because I, I don't think I'm, I'm good at riding it or, or – I'm afraid to it's I just don't trust these idiots in the road but if oh, they yeah. want to take their car and bang it against my truck I mean I'm gonna be like you scratch my rusty truck and they're gonna be like you totaled my car you know <laughs> that's why I phrased it the way I did that you were more alert not paranoid you know what I mean well some people kind of confuse the two but yeah, I don't now I, I don't necessarily agree with AWAG once said that he wishes that he could do 120 miles an hour because he's he's got a car that can do it and he's totally he, he knows how to do it. And it's like, yeah, I remember being that age and I, I used to do 120 on the expressway all the time. How I never got caught, I don't know. But, you know, the same person that's doing 120 on the expressway is going to do 120 down a residential street, too. And, you know, when I was younger, I was like, man, I sure wish they had a thing called a speeding license. And, you know, they, you, you could just, uh, you know, show the cop your speeding license. And he goes, all right, have a nice day. But it just doesn't work like that. I, some of the speed limits are set the way they're set because they're speed traps. And they are trying to generate revenue. And you can see the cops sitting at the same spot where they lower the speed limit 10 mile an hour for a quarter mile stretch every day at the same time when there's the highest traffic's there or whatever it is. But in other places, the speed limit's set to a certain, because that's what the road can handle. So I, some of the traffic laws I get, and some of the things, it's public safety, and try to obey it, and that sort of thing. But some of the other stuff, when it's, it's your personal choice, you know, I'm more concerned that your car has brakes and you can stop than you got your seatbelt on. Because whatever happens to you, as long as I ain't got to pay for it, I don't care. Well... I agree with some of those statements in theory, but not in the practical application of them. It'd be nice if these people just kind of did their own things and it didn't affect anybody else, but it does. It affects well, everybody I can, else. I can tell you they, they just legalized pot in Michigan, and now more people are smoking and driving than they were before. So it encouraged bad behavior, unsafe behavior. And a lot of people are going to be surprised when they get pulled over and they get an OUI 
Uh, and they're like, but, but it's legal. Well, not while you're operating a vehicle, sir. You know, not while you're carrying a gun, sir. Not while you're driving a yeah. forklift, forklift guy. <laughs> hey, beer is legal. Alcohol is legal. It's all legal, but yeah. not in this activity that you were doing. Yeah. So I just, I, I understand the whole premise behind the whole, it encourages unsafe behavior because it's when your behavior affects me. That's when I care about it. Otherwise, if it just affects you, I don't really care. That's, that's your life. Do what you want. Throw it away if you want. I don't care. But as soon as you endanger my family or myself or you cost me tax paying money or anything like that, you cause my insurance rates to go up or my health insurance to go or whatever it is, or I've got to wait in the emergency room because of you or whatever it is, that's when I care. So as long as, you know, I guess it's that libertarian kind of thing. You know, as long as you don't hurt me, I don't care what you do with your life kind of thing. So 